This year in paleontology has been one of the best in decades, with plenty of new dinosaurs for the dino freaks, but also all sorts of interesting things discovered about broad topics, concepts, and of course, fossil finds throughout the Phanerozoic Eon and beyond. December saw the publication of only a few cool dinosaur things, but many other far more fascinating things that are cool enough to make you exhale some air from your nose. A subdued, exasperated chortle, even. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the guild. This year has been one of the worst on record for basically everything. Life on Earth is headed into the great dark abyss and I cannot help but wonder what was it all for? Oh yeah, that. Anyway, way, way underneath all the heinous things the worst, most empathyless, soulless monsters we share a species with were doing, the best of us were busy finding, describing, and understanding the way that things are. These uh, boners, I mean, bone people, I mean, uh, paleontologists, and maybe even some biologists for kicks and giggles, were hard at work doing science for us dum-dums to digest and then add it to our worldview. You are likely here, having just watched Dino Fax's segment of Paleo Rewind, so that means that after this one, you should come back to this old corpse of a channel to sit through the chaos that is the entire Paleo Rewind compilation. Where is 2024's, you might ask? Well, you see, I tried. I will have it out as soon as I can. Thanks for your patience. Make sure you watch the videos made by all of this year's participants and follow them, assuming you like their content. Pfft, I can't force you, though I would if I could. Falsus Caris. Many of you know of the Burgess Shale a huge chunk of rock in the Canadian Rockies that preserves things so well that the history of the beginning of complex life forms fell out of it. There are many more sites like this globally, and one of those is the Ordovician-aged Fezuata Formation of Morocco. Most of the fossils that come from this geologic formation preserve carbonized films where the soft tissues of the bodies used to be. Back in the Ordovician, this region was at the poles, so the fossils that come out of it help to better round out what was going on at that part of the world. December saw the publication of a paper describing seven mouthparts belonging to a group of invertebrates you may not know the name of, but you definitely know the face of, the radiodonts, such as the famous Anomalocaris. These fossils were uncovered by Mohammed Ben Mula and his family from 2009 to 2019, along with a bunch of other fossils. The seven mouthparts belong to three different institutions in Switzerland and the third world known as the US. The author team that described the remains, which was international and includes names my western tongue would butcher, found that the mouthparts would have belonged to a rather huge radiodont of 0.7 to 1.2 meters or 2.3 to 4 feet in body length. The researchers described the anatomy of the mouthparts, finding them to be very similar to those seen in other arthropods that rake through the top layer of sediment for their cheeseburgers and fries, making the new creature a benthivore. They named the new animal Falsascaris mumakiana, being composed of falch or scythe, caris for crab or shrimp, and mumak in reference to the giant elephants in The Lord of the Rings. Though the body and head is unknown, the anatomy of the mouthparts are closest to those of the Herdiidae group of radiodonts, which were usually large, boat-shaped, and carried generally smaller mouthparts arranged in a basket-like configuration. That said, Falsascaris had quite large mouthparts. What that mouth do? Troll for bottom-feeding morsels. 
Solo Siren. When you think about the fossil record, I bet you don't tend to think of many places within what many outdatedly refer to as the Middle East. This is due to the generally fraught political climate of the region. However, the rock deposits throughout the region are extremely rich in fossil content. Paleontologists from the Smithsonian, some parts of the US, Panama, and Qatar were out in the deserts of the US's corrupt butt buddy looking for the fossilized remains of dugongs, which still hold on in seagrass meadows along the coast. Over the field seasons of 2023 and 2024, the researchers uncovered over 300 fossils belonging to around six individuals of a new dugong species from 172 different spots in the dam formation eroding out of Al Mashhabia. With so many remains, they were able to describe the new species as Salwasiren catarensis. Salwasiren was smaller than today's dugongs, with a less bent snout and smaller tusks. Though no seagrass fossils were found in the layers the bones were found in, it's assumed they would have been around since the sediments do prove the area was still shallow coast. Bioju Achilles. One of the most unusual turtles with us today is, perhaps unexpectedly, the hawk-nosed turtle. This thing is weird mostly because it belongs to its own group separate from the sea turtles, freshwater turtles, and tortoises. It's a trionician, meaning it's mostly closely related to a bunch of extinct turtles that were living it up in freshwater and saltwater environments throughout the Cretaceous period and Cenozoic era. December saw the publication of a new species of this type of turtle, members of the Caretochiliidae group, by a bunch of researchers in the Swiss Journal of Paleontology. The turtle, which they named Biolju Achilles Yosuensis, comes from the Cretaceous Hasendong formation of South Korea and is based on a relatively complete specimen preserving much of the shell. It's not particularly unusual, but it does provide some new insight into the evolution of these often overlooked turtles. Bolivian Dinosaur Tracks Between 2019 and 2024, a group of American and Bolivian scientists went out into Bolivia's Torotoro National Park to document a huge field of fossil footprints dating to the Cretaceous. They published their work, which included descriptions of over 16,000 total tracks in Plus One. All of the tracks were made by theropod dinosaurs, with some matching the anatomy of the feet of giant hyperpredatory forms like carcharodontosaurs, while others were much smaller and more gracile, akin to ornithomimosaurs and noosaurs, a truly breathtaking place. Santana Raptor and Marischia Reevaluation. There are two tiny Salurosaurian theropod dinosaurs known from the soft tissue preserving layers of the Cretaceous aged Romualdo formation of Brazil Santana Raptor and Marischia. Santana Raptor was discovered in the late 1990s and described in 1999. Marischia was found in 2000 and named in 2004. Both are relatively fragmentary, and many paleontologists have wondered if they were the same animal or what they were related to. Rafael Delcourt and colleagues published a paper reevaluating the holotype specimens of these two theropods in the anatomical record, finding that they really cannot be comfortably lumped together, though they do share a lot of similarities. So many similarities do they share that this new investigation found them to be each other's closest relatives along with Jura Tyrant of Jurassic Europe and Tanicalagrius of Jurassic North America as some of the earliest branches of the Manoraptoromorpha group, the group which led to the Ornithomimosaurs, Compsognathids, Dromaeosaurs, and birds. Bees and Bones? South of the town of Oviedo, in the Pernales province of the Dominican Republic, lies a cave, Gueva de Mono. In that cave are many fossil and subfossil remains of the weird and wacky birds, mammals, and reptiles that once inhabited the island of Hispaniola throughout the Pleistocene and Holocene epochs. Among the fossils found in Cueva de Mona were the bones of large rodents and sloths, 
but upon closer inspection, they seemed to have been excavated in a very specific and organized way in some hollowed parts of the jaws. When these bones were CT scanned, the researchers found that the excavations matched the exact size and shape of bee nests. This is the first occurrence of such behavior, and their investigations also found that this species of bee came back to use the bones as nests for generations. Manipulonics All the way back in 1979, a small, fragmentary, theropod dinosaur fossil was recovered from the Cretaceous Nemect Formation of Mongolia and taken back to the Russian Academy of Sciences, where it stayed pretty much unremarked upon until 2025, when it was CT scanned and beautifully reconstructed by talented paleoartist Andrei Atuchin and described by Alexander Averinov and Alexei Lopatin in the Proceedings of the Zoological Institute RAS as a new species. Manipulonyx reshetovi, a type of dinosaur called an alvarosaur. These were usually very small, lightly built animals that bandied about on a pair of long, thin legs with big muscular bases as well as carrying a pair of teeny tiny arms with robust forearms and giant claws instead of hands. They also had very sophisticated ears, eyes, and brains for seeing in the dark and hearing the minute twitches of teeny tiny prey items. Manipulonyx is known only from some vertebrae from the neck, pelvis, and tail, a tiny chunk of the knee and foot, but most importantly, the shoulder girdle and arms, which preserved the weirdest arms yet known from this group of weird-armed weirdos. Here is the skeletal diagram of the hand. Kind of hard to tell what is going on here. This one looks almost like an actual Swiss Army knife hand. The big thing in the middle is a finger, with those two smaller ones to the sides also fingers. Then you've got what appears to be three knobs of keeled bone between the fingers, on the top of the wrist, and on the inside of the hand. These bones are called osteoderms because they are bones that sit underneath the skin, usually with a layer of keratin that goes over the skin and over the bone. So, this is what such a hand might look like in life. A big spiky mitten with a harpoon finger sticking out of it and two tiny little stabilizers hanging under it all. Unfortunately, no skull for Manipulonyx, so it cannot be fully confirmed what it was eating, but the researchers think the hand anatomy points somewhat strongly in the direction of oophagy, or egg eating. People are used to the oviraptorosaurs as the egg eaters, but that's a misnomer. The alvarosaurs seem to be better adapted for the job since most had long skinny snouts, tiny bodies, and small but powerful arms with that big claw. Manipulonyx's hand seems really well adapted to grasping and holding on to a smooth egg and then cracking it with the giant claw. Truly one of the most bizarre beasts. Though that doesn't cover everything for the month of December, it does cover a lot and gives you a good taste of what people found out about life on our planet for the terrible, horrible, no good, totally rotten year of 2025. I'm sure we all experienced a good bit of good things over the last 12 months, so you know, it wasn't all bad. Nothing can ever always be all bad. That said, the next year is going to be worse in so many ways. I cannot wait to behold the man-made horrors well within my comprehension, and then some. At least we still have the dinosaurs, and movies. We still have the Godzilla movies to look forward to. Make sure you go back and watch the Paleo Rewind videos of everyone involved with this project this year. They will be in the comment section and description. You can also find them and links to them in the announcement video for this year's Paleo Rewind. See you back on Edge Science tomorrow for the full compilation video. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.